It's not about knowing what stress is, it's about how to apply this to your life, knowing that you are not the normal individual in today's society. You're pushing after something, you're leading other people, and you've got a lot on your shoulders. So stress removal is not the option, it's how do we show up more effective. I think the bigger underlying thing here is looking at it through the lens of something that we're doing, we're building, we're leading others, like it's a very exciting process. But we get into a space where we kind of become a little bit addicted to that dopamine of doing more. And it's very easy to do the day-to-day -day stuff. It's because we get very, very good at doing it. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Knowledge Bomb episode of Lead to Greatness, where we believe in helping others reach their greatest potential and together change the world. Today on Lead to Greatness, we have Ole Woods, if this is your first time joining us, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell and hit that like button. This will be greatly appreciated in helping getting out this content to great leaders and great individuals like yourself. Oli got started in the business world after seven years of an independent personal trainer. He has a deep background in business, health coaching, gut health, biomechanics, leadership, mindfulness, and nutrition. Odie has committed the last decade of his life to develop his Body Reset program alongside world-class coaching that has impacted thousands of clients around the world. Please help me welcome Odie. This is Cedric Francis and you're listening to Lead to Greatness. I'm based down in uh, New Zealand, uh, Wellington, New Zealand, and uh, we've been, I've been a coach for the majority of my adult life. I started off as a personal trainer halfway through uni uh, and took that uh, shift pretty quickly to working with a lot of clients one-on-one, -on -one, understanding what was really going on. For me, having a background in pretty much every sport I could get my hands on, whether it was rowing, rugby, canoe polo, uh, rock climbing, um, you know, everything in between. I started to understand how much of a nuance there was to every one of those sports, right? We think, ah, oh, it'd be easy to ride a motorbike, but then you yeah. realize like how much you have to keep that going around a track. It'd be easy yeah. to, you know, um, ride a horse and uh, hit a ball, right? Playing like full <laughs> polo. Right. There are so many variables, right? With all of these sports and understanding yeah. the the first 20 hours or first 40 hours of each one of these sports, how much you learn around the nuances of being cutting great, right? And yeah. I think understanding that allowed me to just be in, in, very curious about all of the stuff at at a high degree and at a very basic level with my clients i think many wanting the perfect program or what is the one perfect diet and i think a big thing that we look at there is well one no diet is going to be good for everyone and one no diet is going to be work for you all of the time all right it's yeah. the same with nutrition and all of these shifts was just the nuances that we went through so after six or seven years in an in-person gym you know my training went from being very military style like let's make sure you don't leave this gym until you're sweating mm. <laughs> um to more of a like 50 percent lifestyle uh, nutrition conversation and then it started to become more about lifestyle navigating the stress and the projects and all the things that are happening in a busy business owner or or a leadership type role mm -hmm. where we aren't just navigating how do we get a workout in we're navigating how do we make sure our body responds and mm. we can show up in the best way possible so it was a very natural progression for us online but you know at a very simple standpoint i think I, i've been a coach for a very long time and understanding how to make sure clients get the most out of their day how do we get your body back on your side so you don't feel like you're trying to beat it up in the gym or you know trying to starve it with a new diet i think if you want to show up and you still want to be in great shape I truly believe that you can have the body and the business that you love. It's just making sure that you navigate this in a way that they are very connected and you're not looking at stress being the the problem, but more of a way to actually cultivate more focus, productivity and enjoyment along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to talk about that. Some of those things, you know, what are some of the biggest challenges, you know, as far as leaders that you see us face with breaking uh, those bad habits and trying to, you know, start a new regimen and trying to get our lives together yeah, uh, I think the big one that we see really common in people that are driving to do more and produce and, and be productive through their day is there's a real all or nothing attitude, right? And I've just mm -hmm. seen this theme come through time and time again. But I think, you know, if we take it back to a very simple analogy of what happens in the gym, right? It's literally a pursuit of finding failure over and over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so wow. looking at it through the lens of being all or nothing, it really doesn't help us to be that binary right it's always a process of how can i be a little bit better on nutrition or how can i be a little bit better with my morning routine it's yeah. not a case of i'm perfect or why bother right there's always going to be an iterative approach in the right direction yeah. so to step back a second i think the biggest thing we can do to improve for me personally and what i've seen and a lot of leaders we work with and why we focus so much on the 
their personal health and, and the translation to business growth or success or focus is I think personal variance or personal inconsistency is going to translate to inconsistency, right? So if they don't have a locked in anchor for them to actually make the most of their day, we dive very deep into the understanding of stress, right? I think every health professional is telling us that stress is the problem with us trying to get in shape. But I think if you're anything like me and you're someone who's a CEO, business owner, um, you know, part of a startup, one of these guys that is just pursuing more, yeah. I think you, you're going to be in a space where if you spend two or three days on the beach, that's lovely, but you get to a point where you're kind of itchy and you want to do something, right? Yeah. And understanding that, I think, is the very premise of stress not being the problem, but ultimately a sweet spot in the middle, right? If we don't have any stress, we're bored out of our minds. We don't know what to do next. Mm. Whereas if we push that lever too far and we're not looking after ourselves, that's where we're going to hit burnout, right? For me, is the ultimate paradox and something that I've just been diving into so deep lately is understanding that stress is not a level, it's a threshold, right? Mm. And that is something that means it can increase or it can decrease based on your actions in your day. So the first part of that, and I want to break this down into two sections. One okay. is stress is something that can be lowered, right? If we're finding that we're stressed out all day, it's something that's chronic. Human beings or animals in general are not made to be stressed throughout a long period of time. We're going to break down muscle. We're going to increase fat and everything else that happens from a chemical level to make us weaker, right? It's going to mm -hmm. just beat us down to the point that we feel burnt out, even at the same level of stress, right? Mm -hmm. But understanding that, stress is not just coming from psychological, but what are the foods you're eating that's causing you to be inflamed? What's the the broken up sleep that's causing you to not be able to be next as resilient the following day, right? These are all variables of how do we tolerate stress? It's got nothing to do with the stress coming through, but are we in a position to actually tolerate it based on our current re recovery ca capability, mm -hmm. right? Which kind of brings us to the second point, which is how do we become more resilient to stress? And this is where it comes right back to the inconsistency i guess with our actions at work we tend to be a bit more volatile we're, we're not making the same decisions today as we did yesterday and it's very hard for people to feel led by us because we're not consistent in our actions and i think this comes back down to that anchor that you have in that morning what is something that you're doing to kind of choose your own challenge and i think this is a theme that i've started to keep come through with really great leaders that are showing up every day with the same conviction behind their action and words is that they've got something in their morning or something in their day that really sets up that challenge, that focus that they can tackle more. And I think the beauty in this, and there's a lot of studies kind of backing this up now, is ultimately at the end of the day, it, it, it creates a discrepancy between the high level stress that you can choose versus the low level stress that we know is humming through all of us on a day to day level. And I think when you create that, you just come in with a lot more of an indestructible mindset and a body that can actually tolerate it. Wow, wow, wow. Because you mentioned a few things. You mentioned food, you mentioned sleep, and you also mentioned yep. environment, you know, as far as your work and things like that. How do we manage that? I mean, because that's someone right now that maybe listens and say, you know what, I have this job to do. I'm traveling a lot. I can't find anywhere to eat healthy. I, I don't get enough sleep and all these different things that you just pointed out that leads to stress. You know, that's someone listening right now was like, man, you know what? I, I don't I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yep. What are some things that you can share with the Lead to Greatness community right now today that they can get started with right now to kind of deviate some of that stress? Yeah. So firstly, that anchor in the morning, I think, is something that you can do okay. regardless if it just becomes the easiest one for you. You know, if you're traveling, you're getting up and you're going for a walk, right? One, it gets you to see the new city that you've just dropped into, but it allows you to reset that circadian rhythm so that you can get back into a decent sleep routine and all the benefits that are going to come from just a little bit of light exposure and movement in the morning. I think that's not one to be missed, yeah. but I want to give you three new ones from a nutritional standpoint to make sure that we can continue to show up and not feel like we're getting thrown off our goals just because we're traveling or work is busy, all right? Okay, awesome. So the first, I think the first one comes down to the sort of grazing habit that we all get into or justifying that we're being healthy because we're being told we're fasting. <laughs> I mm. think fasting is something that we all do, whether it's for eight hours or 16, we're all doing it. But at some point, that becomes less beneficial and more of a stressor. And if you're someone who's in a get up and go space where you're needing to get you know more done, you've got a lot on your plate and you need to fuel the day, there's no point starving yourself for 18 plus hours for the day. So I'm a fan of fasting in the right place. You know, maybe it's weekly, monthly, and we do more of a longer day fast. We all fast to some degree. But okay. what does that look like between a 12 hour fast, 14 hour fast, 16 plus? I think it's that point where you feel that, you know, once you start eating, you can't stop, right? Like if you've got to that point, you're so hungry that you kind of overconsume to catch up, mm. that's going to be an issue. The, the second part of that is increasing your overall protein intake. If you're someone that's in a space that is high stress and, and high productivity, 
ultimately increasing your protein intake to be a key anchor in making sure you actually sit down to have a meal rather than just grazing on crap food that comes through. It's going to decrease your cravings. It's going to be a lot better for your overall gut and cellular health and making sure that you have an anchor of rebuilding tissue or rebuilding you know, that recovery capacity you need for the day, right? which dives into the whole performance section we can look into a little bit. And I think the third one, which is, if not the most important around a digestive capacity, is simply taking five deep breaths before you have a meal, right? It sounds mm. incredibly simple, but I think when we live in this world where we have this chronic low-level stress because we're always thinking about the next thing, just taking a second to be uh, to realize how overstimulated we've been. Like we're talking here, you know, I'm I'm if I was to go eat a meal down right now, I would feel it just sitting in my gut, right? Because I'm not in a space to actually digest food. I'm in a I'm focused on on talking to you. Wow. bringing the best to your audience and making sure that we can like have a good conversation. I'm in a very heightened state. Now, many of us go through the whole day like that. <laughs> if we don't take a second to actually just breathe and check in with where that state is at, we're still in this fight or flight response. Our, our blood is pulled towards our muscles. We're trying to focus on getting something done. If we can take the time to like just decompress for a second, bring that black that blood around our digestive organs and actually be in a position to improve our immune system and digestive capacity, we actually absorb the energy from the food we're eating, right? It's not what we eat, it's what we absorb that matters. Yeah. And when we look at that, we're in a much better space to you know, function and pr perform on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that's the missing link when we look at performance is we think of performance as really a stressor, but really the goal is how can we show up day after day and perform? And this is where that conversation becomes a lot more about recovery and showing up better tomorrow. Right. Awesome. 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 Here's the thing. I am a recent believer that habits are very, very important. And yep. I know you talk a lot about high performance habits. I want you to kind of explain what does that mean? What does that look like? And why is it that important? Yeah, I think it all ties back to our personality as this type of leader where okay. we're probably a little bit all or nothing. And I think it's mm. allowed us to achieve some level of success in business. And I think we need to be at some level, have the ability to burn the boats and be overly optimistic because I think a lot of the odds are in our are not in our favor, right? We have to really produce and focus and, and build something great in order to get through that first threshold to take it from a startup to something that's really going to build long-term, right? So it's a mindset that you have, and it's probably something that has helped you achieve all sorts of things to get to this point, yeah. because you need to be incredibly resilient just to get through that first threshold. So I think that in itself reinforces that internal desire, and it's helped us a lot in business. I don't think it helps us just as much in health, because it's a continual process of finding that next rung, rather than trying to go from zero to 100 overnight. So looking at this through the lens of uh, zero to 60 in your world, uh, 100, it would be Ks over here. But looking <laughs> at through uh, that lens, I think we're simply looking at, like I mentioned before, performance is your ability to show up again tomorrow consistently and if we look at high level olympic athletes and and uh, professionals in that space it's not about having one good performance today it's be able to show up consistently every single day to hit that level and that's why when we look at you know in the racing space and i you know used to be in the motorcycling and, and sort of track racing space a wee bit where they are less than half a second off every single lap every single weekend right they're just and you see that in every single sport that might be track racing that might be you know on the uh, football field all sorts of things is we're simply looking at that consistency of a high level performance. Performance is not a one time thing; it's a consistency of that performance. Uh -huh. So that's why we dive into that recovery capacity so much. Is just anchoring in the ability to show up better tomorrow. And many of us are stuck in a negative loop of we use something to calm down. It might be alcohol or something to to unwind, and then the next day we're using caffeine to pick back up. But we're constantly borrowing from tomorrow's energy that uh -huh. we get stuck in that loop. Oh, only those are a load of knowledge bombs. And you're really helping us. When, when you were talking, I'm just thinking about a sprint and a marathon. I mean, a sprint is something, bam, right there and you're done and it's over. But you're talking about marathon living, you know, something that's going to be long distance and consistently throughout your life, really changing the way we do things and not these quick things that, you know, we're going to be in and out of, but changing our total life and what we're doing. I like that. I want to shift to body reset. Let's talk about body reset. What inspired you to begin the journey and why? Yeah, man. Um, for me, you know, we, we very much work with uh, high functioning business owners and busy professionals for, for one reason. And it was simply everything that we've talked about today is, you know, I started off as a personal trainer where the main goal was to 
uh, optimize their training. And I went down a massive rabbit hole working with the best in the industry to understand how could I optimize exercise and their ability to progress over time. Mm -hmm. And what I started to realize after it took me five or six years, but got to the point to realize that it was the amount of stress and information that they were walking through the door. It was, it was very hard for us to get any sort of result moving forward. They got stronger. They continued to show up. Like they all felt good, but there was that niggling feeling of like their body's not really changing in a space where I was, I wanted to make sure I was getting the best for my clients. It was always going to be a conversation of, okay, what's the missing link here? Cause we've actually got to the point that we're, we're training all the angles. We're building a beautiful progression with all the variables considered, yet they're still not getting the results. And there's a lot of men, a lot of women in that space where maybe they're in their mid forties and fifties. It used to work a little while ago and their current routine is no longer working, right? There's a mm. lot of people in this space like, oh yeah, I'm doing the health thing, right? When did it become something that was finished, right? As mm. you said, mentioned before, it's not a sprint. It's something you want to do for the rest of your life. And that yeah. is something that will change over time. Yeah. Yet we're in the business space. We've always got mentors and leaders and like, what am I missing? What am I looking for? I don't think we apply that same focus. And, you know, very much so. I think, you know, if business is the focus or building the 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 baby, the the machine that you're trying to build to, to help the world, that's probably primarily the big focus. But if your body's starting to let you down there, you're noticing that your energy is inconsistent. You might want to just look at refining, you know, what used to work may not work now. So that becomes a big sort of space for body reset. It was a very tra natural transition for us from an in-person personal training space to being online because it was very much a case of one, there is so much here that I'm not taking into account for the exercise hat. And two, now that I know that I need to look at stress, sleep, gut health, mindset, and all of these areas, I've now got about 35 years of study to catch up, right? Yeah. So it became a, a space of hiring the best possible people I could find in order to bring in the specialists in that space. So our community has very much become a, a collection of uh, you know, psychological, physical, and digestive health in one particular space. It's no longer, you know, Ollie's got all the information. It's like, well, how do we bring the best of the best together to build out the complete health plan to get you back to your body actually working with you? So that's the thought process or how it came to be very client centric, but around, okay, business is not the problem, even though everyone in the health space is telling you to de-stress, we are focusing on building your body back to tolerate the stress and, and toxicity that comes through in the day to actually be resilient and, and ready to rock. So for, for us today, we're, we're really walking you through our five-step formula. And what we're looking at is very much stress, toxicity, uh, sleep, nutrition training, right? Most of those are going to feel like you've heard them before, right? It's like, yep, Ollie, I've, I know about those. Yeah. But hopefully we've we've dug into the stress component of this a little mm -hmm. bit today. Yeah. It's not about knowing what stress is. It's about how to apply this to your life, knowing that mm -hmm. you are not the normal individual in today's society. You're pushing after something, you're leading other people, and you've got a lot on your shoulders. Yeah. So stress removal is not the option. It's how do we show up more effective? Mm -hmm. So I think the bigger underlying thing here, and I'm glad that landed for you, is looking at it through the lens of, something that we're doing, we're building, we're leading others. Like it's a very exciting process, or at least it is for me. But we get into a space where we kind of become a little bit addicted to that dopamine of doing more and focusing yeah. on the the constant stimulation in our day. <sighs> so when we look at it through the lens of a lot of the activities we need to do, it is a recentering. And a lot of times that quite honestly feels a little bit boring. But the only way to show up consistently tomorrow is to make sure we rebalance that out at some level. And the thing you mentioned before was, it's very easy to do the day-to-day -day stuff. It's because we get very, very good at doing the urgent stuff, right? And as we get better at a leader, as a leader, we start to decipher between, okay, these things are both urgent, but one's important and moves the company forward and one's not so important and we can do it later. Yeah. But I think there's a third layer to that that really creates the infinite entrepreneur or the guy that's really going to keep going or the woman that's going to keep moving forward is now identifying between urgent and important and understanding that there's a lot of levers that are going to move our company forward that you know are not going to happen unless you create the space. It's not urgent today, but if you don't get it done the next two months, mm -hmm. it's going to be a big shift in ultimately the strategy of the entire company, right? right? It's the classic, are we working in the business or are we working on the business? It's yes. the not urgent, important stuff that's not helping us move forward. Yeah. But there's a lever in there, team, right? If you're not looking at this, understand where does health fit in that whole category? It's the not urgent, important stuff, right? It's exactly that strategy, that big lever, the one that's not knocking on the door until it is, and you wish you did it three years ago, yes. right? So it's a constant building that muscle of what's the not urgent, important stuff that really moves my life, my business, and my body forward. And I think that allows both of these, again, it's the it's a continuation of health and business together. We get to move both forward. Wow, wow. Only that is another knowledge bomb. And I'm glad you mentioned that. And I'm really thinking... I mean, this is going to take a great mind shift with this world of stress. What can I do? 
to be okay with not jumping, you know, those dopamine inserts to that long-term result of the process. Yeah, man. Um, so if you haven't noticed already, I'm in a sling. <laughs> And that's a process that uh, has been a couple of years now. This uh, helmet up here is a, uh, a motorbike crash I had a couple of years ago on a track. And uh, I was uh, going about a 200 Ks down the straight, 140 miles an hour. Uh-huh. And I had entire brake failure, uh, which at that kind of speed is, is never going to turn out too great. A- and of all things considered, I came out of that pretty good. I still have a, a spine and a pelvis intact, but I tore uh-huh. everything off my shoulder um, you know, landed very close to the road, missed a fence, gutter, and everything else in between that could have very well killed me. Mm. And going through that process of I'm in the hospital bed, and the first thing I'm worried about is like, this is really inconvenient. I got to show on Monday, yeah. <laughs> right? And we just get so locked in, as you mentioned, with what's on the next agenda, what needs to be done by Monday, you know, how many things do I need to cram into the next six days to really move forward? Yeah. Um, and I was, you know, eight years into this whole health coaching process at this point to then get hit with that and realize, hang on, dude, you're still looking at it completely wrong. Mm. And I think a theme that's come through for our clients a lot recently, I I communicate this a ton because I've simply gone through it, is all of that you're worried about in your day does not happen if you're not here, right? Mm. It all gets put in a bucket and given to someone else and they can stress about it until they have the same realization, right? And I think it really just puts that in perspective, right? Whether it's you gazing at the stars, it's you having a massive motorbike accident, whether it's just you looking at your kids at the end of the day, I think that perspective needs to be shifted to be able to look at it as, well, this thing can actually wait till tomorrow, right? You can finish at five o'clock and go for a walk. You don't need to be there till nine, right? And we dive into a whole productivity strategy session around how we can move the big levers in the day, which is great, but it's an underlying concept of if you actually want to be here in 10 years, you want to enjoy what you've been doing in the process, and you don't want to miss both your health and your kids growing up really good way to look at it. So I had that shift. I had it very much uh, (laughs) hit me front on. And uh, I think that shift of just, you've got to look after you, everything you're worrying about doesn't actually matter. Comes back to that conversation of it's the not not urgent, important stuff that you're not looking at. Oli, that is a life-changing knowledge bomb. Thank you for sharing that. So moving forward, moving forward, that next step, that next thing, what would that be? Um, I think an overarching concept, right? I think I like to teach frameworks more than like, this is your exact step. Because I think if you, you know, a common question we all get, right? What's the perfect time to train or exercise in the day? I'm like, well, it depends on where it is. Because if I found out that from a whole bunch of studies, it was 2 p.m. in the afternoon, how many of you would be actually able to do that, right? It's probably Uh, right in the middle of the biggest part of your day. So a big part of this becomes relevancy to your situation and how you can apply it to your day. So the frameworks tend to work better. So looking at, you know, how many variables variables you have to tackle tackle in the day, typically starting with a morning routine has become popular because it's where hopefully we're able to anchor in one thing for us before we pick up the emails, right? Absolutely. But I think the, the whole conversation that we've just dived into, and I love that tangent of, you know, what do we need to think about differently to make this happen? Yeah. It's looking at it through the lens of something I get to do, not something I have to do. And mm. that for me was a huge realization when i was in uh, i was i rode for four or five years predominantly through high school um i you know rode before school at 5 a.m i'd go to school i'd sleep somewhere in the middle and then i'd row again at the end of the day and uh it became this process that i loved what i did but i found myself complaining about it in a way that was kind of unconscious right like oh, i'm a rower so like um i'm tired during the day and my grades are you know kind of suffering mm-hmm. and my one of my main teachers that i really respected said uh you know this is something you chose to do right and I was just like, oh, yeah, no, yeah, it was. <laughs> and looking at it through the lens of all the things that we choose to do right now, right? The stress that we put ourselves under the projects we have. I think, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners uh, run into mental health concerns at some degree because we're low and we're yeah. not always high and energetic. Yeah. And I think sometimes associating being sad or run down with being a bad thing rather than simply a signal of how far and how much you've pushed your body is a big one. And I think even shifting this to a perspective of how much momentum you have in your day is a really, really good shift, right? Because I don't know about you, but when things are going great, my my mood's good, my energy's yes, good, I'm, I've got to hop my step, that sort of thing. Absolutely. Whereas if you're really you know going through a grind, you're trying to figure out what's gone wrong. There's a yeah. dip in sales or there's a uh, someone in your team's left and, and everything's Absolutely. blown up. Yeah. That is directly linked into our mental health, right? And I yeah. think it's something that is only 
made worse when we start to see that as bad rather than simply a signal to make a shift. All right. And I think, you know, it, the, the famous quote here is if we are, if we see sad as being bad, we have sad more often. Okay. And I think it's simply that association of like, it's okay to have those feelings. It's okay to have a bad day. But if we're not looking after ourselves and we're not in a position where we are checking in with ourselves, I think the, the problem that happens in, in our world is when we deem that sad to be bad, we simply create a disassociation with our brain and body, right? And there's mm. a lot of men, a lot of women out there, more so men, but definitely women too, where the only way that they see themselves succeeding in business is ultimately eliminating emotion. And I think mm. that removes some variability, but at the same time, there becomes a true problem because we keep, we're completely disconnected to our own body right it's a head floating on top of a meat suit and that never ends up particularly well because we're not digesting food we're not sleeping well and that whole health foundation starts to crumble and i think that's where it starts from oh, wow 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 only that is another knowledge bomb this is good this is good and i mentioned to you that i'm 44 years old and there are yep. listeners that are north of 40 years old so my question for you is what must we do differently to stay healthy after 40 uh, we don't get better at endurance. We simply get worse at sprint. And I mm. think that simply wow. it comes right back to the analogy of, you know, if we don't use it, we lose it, right? Like uh, the, whether that's from a muscle standpoint, that's from a stress resilience standpoint, that's from all of these different areas. I think there's a, an ability to train it moving forward. But I think the shift that needs to happen as we move into our mid 40s and 50s is one, there's a capacity thing that we need to maintain, right? From a mass, muscle standpoint and ability to continue to show up at a high degree. But there's also a, a very deep consideration that needs to happen with what used to work 20 years ago is not going to work now. So stop holding on to it. All right. If you notice that you're getting a little bit uh, fluffy around the sides and you started to add in a couple more runs, or maybe you you did a diet for a couple of weeks and it did the job, right? You do that now, you just stress the body out. It doesn't respond as well. You start sleeping weird. You're waking up to pee three times a night. Like it just, the whole thing goes out the window, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the big shift here is uh, one, if we come back to the training analogy, is it becomes a ability to toggle that stress threshold up or down. If you're pushing training so hard that you're feeling run down, then you usually needs to be a shift in training. If you're an endurance athlete, a CrossFitter, someone who's really beating our body up, there needs to be a consideration to what we're recovering from and what we're doing to we're ultimately digging a bigger hole than we can we can fill back up before we go again. All right. Mm -hmm. The second part to that is going to be: Are we fueling the body or starving the body? All right. Are we actually being able to create the change? So, uh, sort of inherently, a lot of the questions we've been going today, going through today, has been the support the body and get your health back first, so you can actually have a performance conversation. And I think that only becomes more important as we start to move in our 40s 50s i had a, uh, a a guy i was talking to that was 74 the other day right and he's actually starting to crank out push-ups in the morning because he's he's got the energy he's got the focus and stability back it really comes back to let's front load health get your body back on your side so it's actually responding it's actually recovering you're actually absorbing food and everything that we've gone through today is a encompassing component of that of okay there's a smarter way to do this how can we do it like a little bit more long term Oh, 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 so many nuggets, so many, so much advice um, inside this podcast that's going to help us and that's going to change the way we live for our families, for our business and for our legacy. This is great, great, great. If someone wants to connect with you and what you're doing, where should they go? Yeah, man, I appreciate it. I really enjoyed today's conversation. Absolutely. Uh, if you want to dive into more about us, I think the easiest way would just be search uh, Hollywood NZ, basically Hollywood without the H, NZ or Z uh, with you guys <laughs> uh, on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, all the main uh, socials uh, or search bodyreset.online. Uh, that's our main website. You can dive into a lot more resources from us. And I think a big part of today's conversation, which I loved, really dives into our five-step framework about you know increasing energy dropping the body fat getting your body to be more resilient to stress if you want access to that full guide you know go to our main website we can get that downloaded for free and you can learn a bit more about us and maybe if we can help happy to, to have that conversation too on behalf of the lead to greatness community i want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all thank you cedric absolute pleasure thank you so we want to thank you for joining us today on the lead to greatness podcast and if this is your first time don't forget to subscribe hit that like button hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of these amazing episodes and if you're on itunes go ahead and rate the podcast and leave a review that helps get the word out to great leaders and entrepreneurs like yourself so we want to thank you for joining us today so remember if you help others reach their greatest potential together we can change the world peace <laughs>